Hi everyone, you're welcome to today's episode of From Becoming a Doctor Preclinical Series. Today we're going to talk about making the most of your preclinical years. But before we delve into the subject matter of today, I want you to subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, like this video, and if you're on Instagram, make sure you follow us. So the preclinical years forms the foundation of your medical school training. And if you have a very good grasp of what happens during your preclinical years and the habits you form especially, you're set for the ride of your life when you get into your clinical years in medical school. So we'll be doing this discussion today in two parts. In the first part, we want to talk about establishing good habits, learning not to complain, making sure you understand everything you're being taught in class and everything you read and not just cramming. We also want to talk about engaging in smart work and not always hard work and then also you have to limit multitasking. In the second part of this video, we're going to talk about balance, knowing what works for you, your associations, should you learn a skill or not and also very importantly, we get to talk about rest. So now talking about establishing good habits, your habits are the little decisions and actions you carry out every day that makes the sum of who you are. Now in medical school, your habits will cut across different areas in terms of your academics, your diet, your physical activity, and also spirituality. Regarding your academics, some of the things I want to highlight for you today would include the fact that you should make sure you attend lectures. I understand that it can be difficult at times, especially when you look at the workload and everything you have to do and there is this temptation to skip lectures. But those persons who actually sit in class and pay rapt attention while the lectures are ongoing can attest to the fact that the work you have to do is significantly reduced when you later get home to sit down to study the day's work. So attending lectures come as a priority. You want to keep track of all the projects and assignments you're given to make sure that you finish them on time. In fact, when I was in school, I do ensure that I do my assignments and whatever I was given on that same day before going home. So that when I'm going home, I'm just going to hit the ground running and tackle the reading plan I have set out for that particular day. Another thing you want to do as regards your academics would include the fact that you want to manage your time very well. There will be a separate video on time management or what some people will call self-management at a later time. As regards your dieting, you want to eat foods that help you enhance memory. Some of them I'll quickly mention would include chocolates, vegetables, fruits, and then you want to stay away from junk foods. It's common for us to take a lot of energy drinks, including, you know, Coca-Cola and all the names you know. They are not so bad, but on the long run, you might notice some adverse health effects. Common amongst young people these days is dental caries. So you want to watch the kind of diet you are consuming because they have detrimental health effects on the long term and also detrimental effects on your memory as a student your physical habits you want to engage in mild exercise it's recommended you engage you do exercise about 30 minutes every day a brisk walk is a good example you might want to join a sports club or join a fitness club just to help you do that aspect of your life which also helps in enhancing your memory and then finally in terms of your habits we we'll talk about spirituality now i'm a christian and we know that prayers and meditating on god's word form a core part of the habits you want to have as a Christian, not just because it's a routine, because it's something you want to enjoy at some point. So you want to make that a core of your preclinical life because the higher you go, the hotter it becomes. As against what you learned in geography in secondary school or high school, that the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. It's the reverse in this case. So you want to put that as a core part of your life so that you're able to do so as well when you get into your clinical years. Number two is not complaining. You know, people tend to complain every time. The workload is much, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, and a whole lot of things, which are in most cases true. And that's fine. People also complain sometimes just to get closure, even though everything is actually fine with them. But the point is, do not make complaining a habit. Even if you have to complain, complain and still get the work done that's the core part of the message i want to pass to you make sure you're getting the work done and you're not just complaining from the beginning of the session till the end i know medical school can be tiring it can be exhausting and all the words we want to use to describe it but make sure that you're getting the work done even when you complain number three would be focus on understanding now 
during my clinical years as a medical student you know i heard some of my colleagues say i want to go and read this particular stuff in anatomy physiology or about chemistry even now as early career doctors and it's not something i ever had to do because my foundation was very strong it's not as though you cannot learn these things later but sometimes now is the best time for you to master them so you have to make sure you are understanding what you are being taught at this level some things you can do to make sure you grasp you know the concepts very well read from multiple materials watch videos online they are free of charge engage with videos watch them digest them get someone to teach you it might be a colleague a senior colleague whatever it is that is difficult make sure you understand it at this phase so that later you won't have to be saying you want to go back to study some things again next is you want to engage in smart work some persons say do hard work in a smart way now this would include yes do everything you need to do I advocate for completing the syllabus the scheme of work whatever it is you were given your course outline quite all right but the student who does hard work in a smart way is a student that stays a high flyer all through the medical program so you want to make sure you have access to the high yield materials the high yield or recommended videos you want to know the courses that the questions will be coming from the lecture notes or the lecture slides you also want to determine and assess the pattern of reading or even the pattern of recall for different kinds of pieces of information so let's say for instance for facts you might want to use associations for list of items you might want to use a lot of mnemonics and then for numbers you might want to split them into parts and recall them so the point is every time you're trying to recall something or to understand something the question you should always ask yourself is what is the best way to approach this subject matter or what is the best way to approach this topic and that's where smart works come comes in it's not the person that works the hardest that usually gets the best have that at the back of your mind smart work is very important do hard work the smart way next is do not multitask i know a lot of persons pride themselves in the fact that they can multitask but i can tell you for a fact actually at the end of the day they might actually discover that they are just microtasking and being unproductive that's what i call being busy but being unproductive productivity comes with tangible excellent results cutting across a, the, all the areas of what you are engaging in but immediately you're seeing you're not achieving excellent results in the different things you're doing that might be a pointer to the fact that you're actually microtasking so yes you can do a number of things alongside your medical school quite all right that's good and fine but the way you approach it is make sure you give block hours to specific things or you take out days a whole day and a portion to this let's say you're learning a skill you know you're reading you engage in leadership roles whatever the case is you don't want to be doing five or six things at the same time so give specific times to different activities that you're engaged in work done is actually equals to the intensity of your focus times the duration of time you spend doing what you're doing again work done is equal to the intensity of your focus times the duration of time you spend doing what you're doing so that determines how efficient and how productive what you're doing at that particular point in it all right now in the second part of this episode today we're going to talk about balance knowing what works for you your associations should you learn a skill or not and then rest when we talk about balance now this will cut across some core areas your academics your other personal engagements and also your hobbies so i had a formula while i was in school when the session is on in progress as against when we are on break summer breaks holiday whatever it's called where you are based in um 70 percent of my time went to my academics 20 percent of my time went to my personal activities and 10 percent of my time went to my hobbies now it all changes during a break or a holiday i spend less time reading more time engaging in all those other extracurricular responsibilities and also more time doing my hobbies so you want to achieve balance across all the different areas of your life the worst thing that can happen to you is for you to finish medical school and the only thing you're coming out with is a certificate no development in character no leadership skill essentially nothing else apart from that certificate no you want to be a complete human being the classroom is not your world rather the world is your classroom remember the classroom is not your world rather the world is your classroom coming down to what works for you 
you must know yourself as you journey along. Are you an audiovisual learner? Where do you read best? What environment favors your reading and assimilation best? What mode of teaching do you prefer? Do you prefer the question and answer interaction type or you just prefer to have your slides, read them, digest them, you know, and do everything yourself? You need to start identifying some of these things so that you can capitalize on your strength and then you also look at the areas of your weaknesses. For instance, if you're the type of student that you know you have a problem writing theory exams or you have issues answering MCQs, those are areas that you want to work on so that you can level up in those areas. Now, there are some things that I do not believe people should say, oh, this is how I am. For instance, I've heard persons say, I'm a slow reader. Or some persons say, I work best on that pressure. And I'm like, no. No one was born a slow reader. I learned how to read fast in school. I'm going to talk about speed reading in a different episode, but I learned how to read fast in medical school. And then also, if you say you work best under pressure, you've just not been consistent enough in your academics to see the results you will get when you show consistency from the beginning of a session up till the end of that session. So don't stick to the bad guys as regards what works for you you want to make sure you are improving across board your associations will cut across three groups of persons your mentors your mentees and your friends for your mentors because these are persons you are going to hold in high regards and in high esteem you want them to be persons that share the same values as you do and then also you want them to be people that would encourage you and not talk down on your goals and your ambitions yes they can tell you something is difficult but never use the word impossible for your friends you want people that are positive minded that wish you the best and you want people that would encourage you you don't want pessimistic persons around you and the opposite of everything i've said but this would also mean that you have to be a good person inherently you can't be praying for very good friends and then you've not done enough work on yourself to make sure you're the kind of friend other people would want to have for your mentees i'm going to talk about that in detail later mentorship and you know on the side of the mentors and on the side of the mentees but for your mentees the characteristic trait you would want is someone that walks the talk so after you've given orientation you've made investment in that person you want someone that will give you feedback regardless of the outcome whether good or bad yes they are allowed to make modifications where necessary but the feedback is very very important should you learn a skill or not in medical school please i encourage you learn a skill the only clause there is you need to determine the time that is best for you to do that if you came into medical school with a skill already wisdom tells you to hone your skill get better at it the learning curve for you at that stage is not so steep as against someone who is trying to learn a skill at a critical phase where everything is in quote choked up so if you want to learn a skill a new skill you might want to take advantage of your holidays the summer breaks end of semester end of session whatever it's called where you are you want to harness those periods to use in building your skill if the learning curve for the skill you're trying to learn is very steep that might equate to you spending more time learning that skill but by all means please develop yourself get that skill that you desire and of course monetize it at some point so it's not a waste and then rest rest is very important the same way you plan for everything i've said it's also the same way you want to plan to rest they say you don't give 100 percent of all your time in medical school no when we talk about productivity it's you give it's you putting in your best to make sure that 100 percent of the time you are portioned for studying you're actually studying but the other time that you did not plan to study please rest you are the glass ball medical school is a plastic ball if you break, medical school will continue and people will move on. So you want to make yourself a priority. So we've come to the end of today's episode of On Becoming a Doctor for Preclinicals. Making the most of your preclinical years. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video, turn on notifications. If you're on social media, please follow us on Instagram. Once again, my name is Dr. Gospel, the Medic Coach, and I'll be seeing you on the next episode. If you have anything you want us to talk about, please feel very free to leave it in the comment section, and I'll be very, very glad to answer your questions. Thank you.